and welcome back everybody to Let's Play Codenamed Iceman. And if you've been wondering how we've been staying with the coons, because I haven't really studied anything, I've just been doing it. It's really easy. Uh, all you have to do is use the left and right arrows. And you have to keep your speed with them. As you can see, I just had to speed up um, to keep with it. Uh, the best thing really to do that I have uh, done is just speed up and slow down depending on how close we are to it. As you can see, we slow down again. And really, the Kunst, all it does is it moves straight up for a while, moves over slightly to the right, and then goes straight again. Uh, straight over to the uh, right, actually. And once it turns, you just really need to set your course to 45 degrees and then adjust it. It is a pain in the butt. Then you need to change it to 90 eventually, and it works out. But it's kind of ridiculous. They like a lot of pointless things. And you are being scored again. So if you don't do it perfectly. Okay, moving off at high speed. There we go. Basically you're trying like not to, to stay with them to get the ping. Yep, you feel a tap on the shoulder, feel what weak voice says to you. Well, Johnny boy, the captain says, looks like you've been putting on one heck of a one-man show. Come to spare periscope depth and speed. We'll have a look around, the captain directs you. I might have a concussion to make me sleep bad good. So, yeah, we need to uh, set our depth to 70. Getting to periscope depth. And then we're already at slow speed, but you have to do that as well. So it is November 4th, uh, one day after I recorded uh, two episodes. I was going to record this one last night, but guess what I did? I sat down on the couch, it was nice and warm, and I was getting ready to watch a couple things and come back to it, and then it was morning. <laughs> so, oops, good thing I had an alarm set, so I didn't waste my entire break. I did really need the rest, I will say. Uh, okay, good, John, let's see what's out there. But, uh... I didn't really want to not get things recorded. That kind of made me mad. All right, Westland, the captain exclaims, come over here and take a look at this. So we need to walk to the scope and look at it. Looks like we have more on our hands than we anticipated, he states. There's a gunboat out there keeping a close watch on the entrance to the harbor. Go ahead and take a look. I'm seeing three or four of them right now because my head's about to fall off. So let's go take a look. I see water. Of course, obviously, you see we have to look over and you see the degree heading there. Okay. Captain, is that your, uh, brain like making fake images because i'm not seeing a gunboat yet oh there's the oil rig it's about 284 degrees if you couldn't see it it's <coughs> the digital of it's kind of yeah. there's tunisia <laughs> Probably not the right Tunisia. Could be a night in Tunisia. Now, if you're wondering how to do it, you literally just use the left and right arrows, and that's how you look. And you press down to exit. And we need to get down to the machine room in a minute here. But let's make sure that we ping the oil rig. Yes, sir, the sonar man does. The oil rig's approximately blah, 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 blah. Thank you. Already calculated, sir. Harbor is blah, 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 blah. Six, it's uh, 1,640 yards away. But you get points for that. If you don't do it, you don't get points. That's that whole thing of, you know, everything by the book. He's flipping burgers. I would love a burger. 
<laughs> Click. So I went and voted. I was a good person. And it's about 9.22 a.m. And I am ready to get this game close to done. Good day, sir. Hope you're having a pleasant trip. I need your key. Aye, aye, Commander, says Johnson. Here you go, sir. I need your clothes, your weapons, and your motorcycle. And a terrible Arnold Schwarzenegger impersonation, folks. I suck. Now we needed the key. Well, I think, I do believe it was so we could get to the diving equipment. Because that's what we need. We need our equipment to get off and swim out of here. Inside the cabin, you see plastic explosive used in the underwater demolition. Two boxes of flares and... Get bomb. Ooh, 500 pounds of TNT equivalent. We pick up the box of flares. And a second. Notice we got points. Okay. Uh, can we take a bag of potatoes? Mmm, potatoes. Okay, using the key, you unlock the door, because, you know, we keep our scuba suit with the potatoes. Let me take that scuba equipment to the escape hatch for you, sir. Why, thank you. It's amazing how quickly that got into a bag. I notice it moving a little bit faster. I did increase the speed now that we're not trying to do all that crazy stuff. <clears throat> that was a fun walk of silence. Making sure. Okay. Going through the nuclear, it's pronounced nuclear, area. Getting to the hatch here that we looked at earlier in the game. Press the button. Okay. You check the diver vehicle. The driver vehicle seems to be running fine, except for a slight vibration. Okay, so let's examine it. Examine the vibrator. From the shaft. Ooh, ooh. Closer look reels a nut and washer used to secure the proper missing. Well, great. So I guess what we gotta do. Half inch. Instead of lugging the dive all of a sub, decide to put it back in this compartment till you need it. And we got points for checking it and putting it back. I will say that the original walkthrough I used for this to make sure I could still do it. I'm not afraid to say that occasionally I use them to figure out what I'm doing. Uh, most of the time I don't need them too much, but you open the cabinet door and see bins. Okay, we've already done all this, but it didn't tell you to examine that. That was just something I remembered. I was like, they literally just say, take it and go. And I'm like, uh, no, that is not what you do. But, uh, don't always trust a guide. They're like, 100% completion, yeah, well, you would have lost, like, 9 points by not doing that, so. 100 completion, my big old butt. But this is quite fun. I haven't recorded three videos in a series of a day in a long time. I'll be so glad when Thanksgiving break comes, because I'm going to record up the butt. I think I'm going to take one night from like 8 to midnight and just go. And then 
another one and just do it. Why, thank you, phone. What are you informing me of this morning? Yeah. I got the wrenches, by the way, I do believe. I wasn't looking. I was looking at my phone. I'm sorry. I'm not supposed to do that. I've only been doing this for like four years. I'm sorry. Actually, it will be four years in January. Whew, God. Slide that washer under the shaft. Install. Nut. You hand tighten the nut flush against the washer. And using the half inch wrench, you securely tighten the nut down. A lot of points. Now we can inspect it again. And it runs smoothly. Yes, yes. It put back your wrench. They'd probably blame us for stealing. You saved the world, but you took one of our wrenches, so we're going to go ahead and put you in jail if that's okay. If it's not okay, we're, we're going to do it anyway. Okay, now he told us what it was from the pings. Yeah, 1640. So make sure you have those that are the same for you. You just have to have him do those pings and that's how you get it. We're going to do a little bit more on this video. I'm going to make it a little, try to make it about 20 minutes. Okay, so we need to put on the suit. You put on the scuba gear and press the button. As the hatch begins to fill with water, you prepare yourself for... Blah, blah, blah. Wait, as the hatch completely fills, the pressure rise equals blah, blah, blah. You reach open the exit hatch, gives you access to the Mediterranean Sea. Whoop! Slowly clear the launch chamber into the open sea. You squeeze the accelerator on the dive vehicle and begin to maneuver away from the Blackhawk. Now, there used to be a, like, FMV choose-your-own-adventure submarine game, and I cannot remember the name of it. Uh, AR-21 had it. As the image of the USS Blackhawk fades, a strong feeling of... Okay, so the best thing to do... I don't do it this way, but I've done it to assist. Um, if you go all the way to the left, and then go up three... It's the easiest way to uh, find the oil rig, but I found it my own way. <laughs> but that is the easiest. So, Well, really, actually, it's go up three, then go all the way left. This is the easiest way. My way is not the easiest. It's the why do you have to make things so difficult way. Which, that's just how I am. But yeah, if anybody can figure out the name of that, FMV game. I'd love to play it. I used to play it at his house all the time. He can't remember it. Swim, swim, swim. There it is. So now what you got to do is place the explosives. Now, get out of there, because you'll die. 
Now we got to head back to the right and then go up more, and that's where we will find where we need to go next. Some neat music. As you can see, your air supply will run out, so you can't just like go all over creation. You have to be able to figure out where you're going. First time I played this game as a young child, yeah, I didn't make it through this part. I had to uh, try and try and try and try. I had to make a map. And, you know, 8-year-old SaxCat20 was not very smart. So, I don't even remember how I did finally beat this game. I think Dad helped me because he was old enough to be able to figure it out. And he's not a video gamer at all. I remember when I was real little, he had to sit in the room with me when I played Castlevania 2. Because <laughs> whenever it would be night and the curse would happen, I would not like it at all. At all. Now, if you remember, we got a magnetic device field device thing back he didn't when we were doing our gambling you need that now so if you did not get it from the dice game you can't go any farther so I hope you got it if you didn't you're kind of screwed then they did do a nice job with the uh, artwork through here I would say Light. The flare is a dud. Great. That one is not. Nothing like a dud flare. Now you might want to see why we picked up two boxes of them. Because if you didn't, you wouldn't have enough. This is all, of course, procedure, doing, not doing these things the right way, will result in not enough points. You may find it kind of silly, but you want those points for your perfect score. You can see we're still getting points. And you do have to be really careful because look how low the air has gotten. But, you know, it does tell us which way we need to go. Appears to be a lot of rocks here. Zoop, go right on through the bottom. Of course, we're lighting another flare, getting our points. Kind of feel like it's like the breadcrumb trail, like where it's trying to tell you what to do. Get points. I 
Like I said, this game does not want you to get perfect score. I mean, it definitely is like, <laughs> you like this game, huh? <laughs> well, too bad. And we gotta hurry, because our air is really starting to deplete. And we got some more points. Hey there, fisherman. Come on there. I know you got that. Oh, we're running out of air. Okay. We're now safe. Yep, now we need to hide the diver. Holy diver! Now we gotta go back to where the net was. Oop. And next time, we're gonna get into this harbor and see if we can't beat this game. So, we have to tell this fisherman, yep. Using the Arabic language, you mention the code Iceman. Without speaking, the fisherman acknowledges by shaking his head. He then hands you a fish. Because fishes are awesome. So let's look at the fish. Fish appears to be a local variety. A piece of fishing line is hanging out of its mouth. We need that. Removing the line and hook, you notice something attached to the line just above the hook. You think to yourself, what is this? The weight? So let's look. Taking a closer look, you see that it's not a weight, but rather a small capsule. So let's open the capsule. You open the capsule and pull out a small map. So let's see here. Let's look at this map. The directions to your disguise. Thank you. <clears throat> My cat is currently being a dick and knocking everything over that has liquid in it hoping that she can get some but she has her own okay so let's look the room looking around this dilapidated structure only you can see is a wooden crate in the corner let's open the crate you open the crate and see clothing so let's get the clothes you reach in the crate, pick them up, and change into them. You wisely drop the fish and the map so they don't give you away. Oh, we clearly look like we should be on this place. Yep. Uh-huh. So we need to go to the right and then up. We're looking for an oasis. Speaking of Oasis, say Iceman. Pull out the code named Iceman and surprise, she responds in English. Hello, John. Long way from Tahiti. Stacy says, I'm happy to see your mission success so far, John. Wish you luck on the remainder of it. Oh, hey, is this who we had sex with? All right. Stacy hands a map to you and gives the key to her apartment. She also gives you a phony ID. She says, find your way to the apartment and I'll meet you there later. I'm going to make contact with USS Saratoga and let them know we're on schedule, she continues. Another thing, she adds, there are things in the apartment for you. You can find them in the kitchen. 
Like our baby that we had, because you didn't use protection, you ass. Direction stay to Stacy's apartment. So now, of course, we need to head that way. To keep your cover intact, you hand the map back to the agent. Yeah, look, another point you wouldn't have gotten. Uh-huh. So let's head to the apartment. So I'm trying to think of exactly how many points that we would have missed out on had I not already known. It's at least 20. All right, we are in the apartment. You lift the small canister from the counter. Now we need to open one up. We have a sugar can. Oh, and coffee. Sugar and coffee. Making a mess, you search through the coffee but find nothing. Okay, we have the medium-sized canister now. So let's open it up and see what's inside. Flour. No, I don't think there's anything in the flour. I thought it was sugar. Yeah, we just made more mess. So we have like coffee and flour and shit laying all over the floor. We don't need this thing. We need the big one. Lift the large canister from the counter. You immediately notice it seems to be bottom heavy. You open the large canister containing sugar. Search the sugar. We make a mess and... Again, it seems to have a false bottom. out the sugar and see the canister seems to have a false bottom after we searched it. We made a mess and then we found it, making them another mess. <clears throat> you remove the false bottom to reveal foam rubber underneath. Oh boy. Let's get ourselves a rubber. And bingo! Concealed at the bottom of canister with two pieces of foam rubber is the weapon. The weapon. Let's obviously take it. You remove the weapon. That was a lot of points. A gun that shoots tranquilizer darts. <sighs> now let's get in the fridge. Cause we're living in the fridge. You can't help the mold from growing. We got something. So let's open it. Ah, there's stuff. Ooh, cheese. Do we have to make a magic wand to work with it? In the ice box, you see various perishable food items. Let's say we got butter dish, block of cheese, milk, ketchup bottle. Not very well stocked, you smirk. You drink the remaining milk. Okay. Eat the cheese. Loving cheese as much as you do, you eat the entire block. You pick up the butter dish. Ooh, what did we discover? Plastic bag that appears to contain a folded piece of paper. You get the plastic bag and remove the folded piece of paper. Same time, you return the butter dish to the axe box.
Ice box. Ice box. Clear goes ice box. There we go. All right, let's read our notes. It says, name of Baghdad's fast foods makes twice daily delivery to the compound. It's a catering business by the name of Bad Baghdad's fast foods. Interesting. So are we going to have to wait for this caterer? Oh, they're at the same time each day. Hmm. Stacy's log file also reveals that one of the two guards will search the caterer prior to entry. The guard then always accompanies the caterer inside. How fun. You remove the business card from the wall. Look at it. Or not. <laughs> Let's look through the window. Oh. Hi there. Strip surgeon. Interesting. Now, let's look at the business card. Business card for Baghdad's fast food catering service. Another phone number has been written on it. Interesting. All right, so let's put in these numbers. This is Basil, speak your business. You explain to the man on the other end that the new caterer will be making the delivery to the compound. Click. <clears throat> so let's use the phone again and then let's, hi kitty. Five 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 five. Would you stop knocking the beverage over? You have water in your dish. All right, so this is the food company. So let's talk to them. You place an order and leave your phony name along with the address of the apartment. The caterer thanks you for the order and hangs the phone up. So now we just gotta wait for the caterer to come. Because we need to take him out. After anxiously waiting the door, okay, you're allowed to knock at the door. So let's open the door. You open the door and let the caterer inside. Hey buddy, here is your order. He says, hot and ready to eat. You're putting the food on the counter, the caterer says, that will be $15, please. Here's my tip and payment. Freeze, you command. Nervously, the caterer puts his hands over his head and says, please show mercy, I only have $50. Kit clothes, I need you. This is not a robbery, you say. What I need is your caterer's uniform. Just ask you to remove the uniform, you continue. What now? Use tape. You screwly bind the hands and feet of the caterer, then tape his mouth to prevent his yelling for help. This could be bad. Oh, okay. You don the caterer's clothes as a disguise and clearly don't look like you're Arabic. Oh well. The funny thing is, you don't have to use the weapon on him. <laughs> yes. Let's work fast. They just received the ambassador is going to be moved. Uh oh. I have to leave now, she says. I must contact my superior and arrange for the helicopter. She advises you to take the caterer's van and begin the rescue. 
just before walking out, she says, Don't forget to the conceal the weapon. Yeah. And you could have shot him with it and done it that way, but once again, they kind of like you to do the non violent approach, I suppose, even though you didn't kill him if you use it. <clears throat> you hide the weapon in the food. You pick up the food with the hidden weapon. We are very close to end game here. You open the door of the van and step out. <laughs> Shlinka Abdul, you reply. Okay, Abdul, he says, blah, 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 blah. Turning the room, the second guard stands near the seated ambassador. Start to perspire as you think to yourself, I'm gonna have to move fast for sure! Put food... on table. You carefully place the food on the table. Now let's open the lid and take our gun. Get gun. Quickly, you grab the gun and point it at the nearest guard. The stern voice of the guard says, Just give the man his food and get on with your business. Shoot. And then shoot quickly again. Yeah, you have to do it quick before they realize what's on. You fire a second tranquilizer dart at the remaining guard. If you don't do it quick, you're dead. Fast-acting drug takes effect as he clutches his chest and slumps to the floor. Score! All right, we are doing good here. God, man, you don't know how happy I am to see you! He continues, I was beginning to think this day would never come! Truly, he says, you're a real American hero, like G.I. Joe. So let's look at the guard. Even unconscious, he looks pretty tough. You notice he's wearing a ring with a KGB symbol. So, you think, our friends the Russians are in on this, and you got points for that. The investor says, I'll be so glad to see my family again. Oh, Lord. Get out of here. We better get out of here quick, you would urge the ambassador. Alrighty. Halt! The guard screams. I should not kill you both. Oh, bam. Uh, oh, he's dead. Oh, there's blood. <laughs> that didn't happen a lot in older games. Stacy, what did I ever do without you? Well, I didn't have sex all that much, probably. We got raspberry jam all over the place. All right, now a least fun part. You can skip it, by the way, if you really want to. Basically what I did was just maneuver the van up. It's really not that hard, it's kind of just silly. It'll probably take you a few tries. It took me three or four. This is the final time, obviously. Get around, okay. It's a shame that you can't just have Stacy shoot him. Almost there. Just make sure you slow down as you go around the turns. That's what I did. As long as you slow down as you go around, you should be alright. Stopping, the three of you hurriedly exit the van and climb into the helicopter. Whew, you say as you draw a deep breath. That was a close one. It indeed was. After narrowly escaping the terrorists, you find yourself safely en route to the USS Saratoga.
After landing aboard the aircraft carrier USS Saratoga, you attend a mandatory debriefing with the captain and his staff where you learn the following. Commander Westland says the captain, United States Intelligence confirmed that the terrorist group guilty of the abduction of Ambassador Lloyd was in fact infiltrated by the Russian KGB. Further, the KGB instigated the abduction, knowing the incident would strain relations between the United States and Tunisia. The underlying motive being that Tunisia would finally sever relations with the United States and halt the oil trade. Which, of course, is still a significant thing. The captain continues, had the incident been successful, the effect would have left the USSR manipulating the bulk of the world's highest grade crude oil. Which would have been bad. This, my friend, would have been a definite negative impact on the economy of the United States. It would have been. <clears throat> still is. In a voice of praise, he says the success of your mission, Commander Wesselin, has turned the tables on the KGB effort and, more important, will expose to the world their devious methods. In closing, the captain says to you, Commander, the words cannot express the appreciation we feel for the success of your mission. The United States Navy is very proud of you. And now, Commander Wesselin, above us on the flight deck of the Saratoga, a special award ceremony awaits you. Because uh, we got 300 points. <clears throat> the presentation is about to begin as you listen to the band play Anchors Away. You wait with anticipation as the band continues to play. Your heart rate increases as the surrounding excitement pumps adrenaline into your blood. Here's someone shout the military command, ATTENTION! Band Tim Hut! With military discipline, you come to attention with the rest of the ranks. You return the salute of the rear admiral, and then he speaks. Commander John Westland, because of your courageous effort, this mission has been a complete success. I know it has. The skills you so expertly demonstrated when taking emergency command of the USS Blackhawk have earned you the coveted Gold Dolphins. Yep, we did it. Further, the Rear Admiral says, with great pride and honor, it is a pleasure to present you the Naval Distinguished Service Medal. Because we've kicked a lot of ass. Take that, Jim Walls. The Wheel Admiral, weird, the, whatever. You proudly return to the Rear, the rear Admiral's sharp military salute. In closing, the Rear Admiral says, Washington has ordered a field generated promotion to the rank of Captain. Congratulations, Captain Westland. Wesker, oh wait, no, it's still Wesker. It's true love for sure, as our hero tenderly kisses Stacy. Well, we've already had sex with her. Woohoo! And that's it! The credits roll. I hope you've enjoyed Let's Play Codenamed Iceman. I will now give my ranking of this game in the Sierra Bowels of whatever. Graphics, particularly for the time, A+. Plus. I think they're great. Music as well, for what little bit there is, I'll give it an A because there isn't a lot. What there is is very well done. I like it and it fits the game. Uh, the plot of the game, eh, probably a C. It's pretty typical of a spy thriller. Not a lot to make you really, really be engaged. Uh, but for the just fun of the game, I'm going to give it a B. Because they make this game, like, butt-hurtingly hard. Like, 300 points is not something that you just get in this game. So, my overall score for Codenamed Iceman is a B. And I wholeheartedly recommend everyone playing it. Thanks for watching. Bye. Continue watching other Let's Plays. Bye-bye.